Greetings all. So this video is going to expand a little bit on what we've already discussed as far as the blues shuffle and the blues scale. And I'm going to be using the song Rock Me Baby uh, as performed by Johnny Winter as kind of the basis for this. I know it's the second song that I've discussed that uh, involves Johnny Winter. Well, he was kind of my first blues influence. And he was able to synthesize so many different styles within his that uh, even though I really can't come close to playing like him, uh, he's very useful to study as far as uh, different licks and things like that and how he incorporates them. The song was originally written, I believe, by B.B. Uh, King. Uh, I could be wrong on that. Double check me. Anyway, it's in A, like the other songs that we've been working on thus far, and it's based on two licks, the first of which uh, is this. Okay, and that's basic A blues position. However, it's using the open string version of fourth position. Okay, so. Okay, it's that one. And it uses the open string. Okay, and then hits the C or the third fret and does a, a hammer-on pull-off. Actually, just a pull-off, not a hammer-on. Then it hits the A. And after it hits the A, open G, and then these are our three in a row. E, E flat, D, and back to the C. Okay, so that's the first one. Again, it's just... Based on A blues scale. The second one shifts up to the fifth fret, which is what we're more familiar with at this point. First position. Okay, and it starts second string, fifth fret. Okay, does a, a pull off. And then a bend. Bend up to your note A to match this. And then just on down the scale. Now, if you listen to the recording, and it's, it's on his, it's the opening track to his Still Alive and Well album, you'll hear he puts vibrato on almost every single note, no matter how fast it's played. That's kind of a hallmark of his style, and it's what gives his playing such uh, incredible swing all throughout. It's like every note has swing to it. Um, and so even on this initial bend, Okay, he does this just crazy, super even vibrato. Um, I can't come close to approximating that even. You'll hear it though when you listen to the recording. Do as much as you can. Uh, it's hard to do a vibrato on a bend. Again, there's two ways you can um, move uh, perpendicular to the fretboard or parallel. Okay, I generally move parallel but it's a little harder to do that on a bend so you can just kind of play around with that um, and find your own way so those are the two basic licks that work within this song then there is our basic blues shuffle now it generally doesn't he generally doesn't do the blues shuffle on the on the a position that's pretty much reserved for doing this lick. And so on. Then, when he hits the D chord, he does. And that's the shuffle with the extra note, right? We had learned... but this adds one extra note with your little finger and we're doing it in straight rhythm we're not doing it in the in the swing or shuffle rhythm so we're not this is rock and roll which generally straightens that out and becomes okay and then it goes back to
and then for the E, it goes to our normal E shuffle, again adding that extra note. And then for the turnaround, uh, he's generally oftentimes jumping up the octave too. Okay, so those are the three things that you want to practice for this. Practice these two licks. And also practice it an octave up. And then practice your shuffle with that extra finger. Now be very careful. Don't, don't play anything but the two strings your open string and the fretted string and make sure you're right on your fingertips so that you're not accidentally fretting other strings okay that'll just sound not very good just those two notes make sure you pick very carefully if you're using a floating hand position uh, you have to be a little more careful. If you're resting your fingers on the on the body of the guitar as I do, it's a little bit easier. The other technique you can use is letting your index finger touch the other strings behind it so that if you accidentally strum too far, you're gonna hit dead strings anyway. Now, there are a couple extensions to these basic licks that he does. A couple of them are done in the intro, and I'm going to show you those, okay? So the first one... Sorry, I was doing the whole one. Okay, so it starts the same. And then... Open D, hammer on to E, and then hit your open G. And the other one is... Okay, and that's... Again, it starts the same. And then he does these two hammer-ons. Open D, hammer on to E, hammer on to G. And then he hits the D. C and A, and I kind of like to do a slide into that. Okay. And he then follows it up after this. With this neat little bend. It's on the fourth fret, second string, and then the third fret, first string, and he's just bending that second string, okay? And you can do it very easily with index and middle finger. And then D, C, A, okay? And those notes are, again, just part of that scale. So. And you can also do that an octave up. That's the sort of bend that uh, is used a lot to get sort of a train sound, beginning of uh, Train Kepper Rollin. Okay, uses that kind of a bend. It's, it's where one string is bending and the other is, is remaining still. Okay, so adding those to our basic riffs, here we've got the main one. The secondary one. And an octave higher and then we've got the two that he uses in the intro and then okay now he does he varies these all over the place he never does each one exactly the same way sometimes this intro one he's actually doing over here an octave higher. This turns out to be second position 
of your blues scale. All right. Okay. All right. Those he transposes all over the place. Okay. And he even throws in little extra notes and things like that. I'm not going to go over every one of those. It would be exhaustive uh, to try and incorporate everything that he does throughout the course of the song, but you don't really need to. Start with those basic ones, and then you can find your own uh, ways to vary them, incorporate them into your own style. Um, like I say, his style is near impossible to copy anyhow, and what's the point? In my opinion, we all want to develop our own style, whether it's uh, you know, as good and polished as uh, someone who was a professional for so many years or not. It's still ours, and that's one of the reasons why we're here making music. So there is that. Rock Me Baby. Check it out, and uh, have a great day.